This week on the Fair Dinkum Department, we've got plenty of outrage to talk through. We've got five big topics. Let's run through them really quick. Is this James Tedesco's final origin game? Feels like we've been talking about this a little bit over the last few weeks. Uh, should New Zealand host a future origin fixture? I have very strong feelings about that. Is Brad Fittler criticism? Is it disrespectful? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, could, could Toby Sexton be the long-term Bulldogs halfback? Getting in on the hype. And finally... In our Dragon segment, we have every single year, a week even, have the Dragons unlocked Zach Lomax in his new role? Outrage, there's plenty of it. We're going to decide if it's real or ridiculous. I'm Chris Danks. You, my friend, Alimo Lachlan. We are the Fair Dinkum Department. Footy, footy, footy. What was your game of the round? Ooh, I'm going to say Titans-Dolphins from Sunday Arvo. Yeah, right. Um, golden point. It was pretty exciting. The Titans, just for something different, gave up a... A half-time lead, um, but I thought the Dolphins are pretty impressive. Um, both sides were, to be yeah. fair, with the, the players the Titans had out too. So um, two teams that are still trying to get themselves in the mix for finals. It was cool seeing all the uh, or the Origin players there. They were getting around it as well. Yeah, Benny Hunt was there looking <laughs> at his um, his new team for next year. So he was, he was just doing a bit of scouting. Um, but no, that was good. It was a good game for you. What did you think? Dog rabbits. Okay. Lo- yeah. Probably one of my games of the year, yeah. actually. I loved it. It was enjoyable, wasn't it? I loved it. Blake uh, Blake. Blake Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Like Lewis. Um, scoring three. Like he was, and he was just so pumped. Like, that, Hell yeah. That Tyrone Munro as well. He's yeah. lightning. <laughs> Gee whiz. It was such a good game. I I loved it. Um, I did think the dog was going to be reeled in there yeah, for a little I bit. I kind of almost felt bad for them. Hmm. But yeah. Hell of a game. Had the vibes of that South Dragons game at Cogra too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> exactly. Like South had no cattle and then they came back late. Oh God. But, um, all right, let's get into it. James Tedesco. Uh, so, is this Tedesco's final Origin game? Mm. Origin 3 starts on Wednesday. Uh, we both know what it's been like for the past two games. Tedesco is the captain. Probably hasn't had the series, or maybe even the season, really, to be mm. fair, that we've come to expect of him. Plenty has been made of his performances. He's really struggled in defence. Looks like he's on skates half the time with his, <laughs> with his short studs. He's definitely slowed down. The Roosters aren't playing particularly well. It certainly hurts him. So there are a few options. We know Drinkwater is 18th man. Uh, Trell is out injured, but it's always an, uh, a possibility. Dylan Edwards is always throwing up. Pappenhausen, when he comes back, there's there's 8,000 options. Gutho, too. Guth- yeah. yeah. <laughs> plenty, of, plenty of fullbacks. Turbo, if you can actually stay fit, ever. So this is probably more of a two-parter. Tedesco, is he actually under pressure to retain his spot, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, the first two games were disappointing, but the, the Blues have lost two series in a row and he's the captain and the fullback three of the last four too, which we've spoken about um, you know, plenty of times over the past <laughs> six or eight weeks. Um, but he has been disappointing this series and he you know, he's owned that. Um mm. and, and everyone can see that he probably hasn't had his his best year. Um obviously the roosters aren't going too well. And I just think with the amount of quality fullbacks that New South Wales do have at their disposal moving forward and, and guys that are a fair bit younger than Teddy too. Yep. Um if they you know they do lose again on Wednesday night. It's only going to bring the noise from, from here up to here um, in regards to Teddy. So, look, I'm a big fan of Scott Drinkwater, um, as we've spoken about yeah. plenty. Um, he's coming into good form. He's obviously been included in the camp, which is a sign that they're looking at him yeah. and possibly ahead of Dylan Edwards um, long-term as a, a fullback option. And Gutho, of course, is on the bench. So there is a lot of pressure on, on Teddy. Um, and I know Gus Gould came out last week and said that this game could be could be make or break for his origin career, and I kind of have to agree with him. Do you think if there was a different fullback for games one and two, do you think there would have been a different result? Maybe not a different result. I just feel like some of the clunkiness in yeah. New South Wales' attack did come from Teddy. Um, so if you had someone that's maybe a cleaner ball player like a Drinkwater or yeah. a Gutho, um, could have iced a few more opportunities, but... Teddy deserved to be there for, for games one and two. Of course he did. He's, he's been a stalwart of the New South Wales team for ages, but um, just looking with a view to the future and a you know potential change in coach as yeah. well um, might bring about a change there, but um, you never want to write off a champion. So I'm not, I'm not going to write him off just yet, but he's under a lot of pressure. I do wonder what will happen if he does have a game closer to what we know James Tedesco mm-hmm. can do on Wednesday night, what that means for next year. Uh, regardless of what happens with with the Roosters this year, some things that are out of his control. But you know, as you said, maybe it is time for a change. I don't think the uh, the drums are going to stop beating for maybe someone new. Mm. So, is this Tedesco's final Origin game? 
Real? Ridiculous. Mm, I'm going to say real. Ooh. Yeah, I think the drink water selection in the squad, yeah. Gutho on the bench, is a sign to me that they are perhaps looking um, towards the future. Um, Teddy's been a great servant for New South Wales for a long time, but his career probably is starting to, to wind down. He has slowed down significantly, Significantly, it feels like, this yep. year. Um, and the Roosters, their performances aren't helping either. Um, so it might be time for him to to focus on um, on club football for the Roosters and yeah, hopefully someone like Scott Drinkwater in future series does get an opportunity in the number one jumper. So does that mean the Prince of Penrith will be your new New South Wales captain? Who's the Prince of Penrith? Nathan Isaiah Cleary. Yo? Nathan Cleary. Oh, no, I'd probably look at someone like Cameron Murray, to be honest, as, oh, yeah. as captain for the Blues moving forward. Um, he's going to start at lock for the first time, which is mm. surprising considering he's been playing Origin for so long. Um, but he's someone I'd look at as a, as a captain for New South Wales moving forward. Are you into that move with Murray starting and then Yo? Know, one of his you know, great attributes is he's an 80-minute player and he's a gun 80-minute player? Mm. I don't... I don't know how I feel about Isaiah Yeo on the bench. I don't know how I feel about the bench in general, yeah. but I'm sure we're going to get into some of the selections <laughs> shortly. Um, I think Yeo is the starting lock, but yeah, I probably would have maybe gone with Cam Murray on the edge and then move him to the middle, but you're not losing anything by having both of them in the team and both of them are going to play lock. So um, Murray just has a bit more versatility, I suppose. That's fair. Sticking with Origin, talk about it moving across the ditch. We've had Origin in, obviously, Brisbane. Uh, Sydney, we've had it in Melbourne, we've had it in Adelaide, we've had it in Perth. Um, no Darwin yet. No Darwin yet. Mm. Yeah, that would, that would be interesting. Very tough. You wouldn't even do it in quarters. It'd be like every 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah you'd have to have a few drinks breaks on you. <laughs> but there's, there's, there's been a little bit of chatter. Uh, Wayne Bennett's obviously jumped in saying that maybe we'll take a game to New Zealand. Um, New Zealand is pretty neglected. Mm. Uh, and so they did the nines for a bit. Um, no, they don't. Bennett's saying it's a no-brainer. I don't know about that. But everyone else has kind of had their opportunity, for lack of a better term. Um, and they are a, a core market for us in terms of TV and just in terms of player recruitment. What are your initial thoughts on taking Origin game, New South Wales v Queensland, to New Zealand? Uh, I like it. I actually, oh, I really like it. Okay. Um, I think it's a, it's a good idea. Um, there's obviously a, a big, you know, growing support in rugby league over in New Zealand, especially with the Warriors going quite well um, this season. So I, I agree with Wayne. Um, I think it'd be a great, great option. Um, Melbourne, Adelaide, and Perth aren't rugby league cities, even though they you know have got good crowds to, yeah. to some of those games. But I guess in the way that it is with a three game series and it's two teams, you don't want to give one team an advantage over the other. Um, so you need to have a neutral venue and. If they, they cycle through those three cities in Australia, I don't see why you can't play yeah. a game in Auckland um, once every four or five years. I, I don't see why not, to be honest. I was originally taking my cues from um, some of the outrage merchants at Daily Telegraph. <laughs> and I was like, no, it's it's an Eastern Seaboard thing. Rah, rah. But the whole part is about growing the game. And as you said, mm. it's one game out of the series. It's not like the entire thing's over there. Why not? Mm. So I'm involved. I don't know I don't know enough about New Zealand stadiums. I guess you'd do it at Eden Park. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the capacity of them, but all I know is when it's cricket, there's about seven people there, <laughs> and then rugby. It doesn't seem like there's any massive ones, but I'm sure there is. Um, so, should New Zealand host a future Origin fixture? Yeah, real. Yeah, I'm going with it. Yeah, I'm on. Board. Get around it. The only the only issue possibly that they could run into is the time zone difference. New Zealand are two hours ahead, and Sick. they'd want to play it for an Australian audience at. <laughs> at 8pm yeah. um, on a Wednesday night so maybe uh, yeah I don't know that would be the only thing that would be a concern it's going to be a tough sell to get people there on a Wednesday night at 10pm yeah 10pm um, oh, 10 at the very earliest more yeah. like 10.30 yeah so that's the only concern but as an idea I like it yeah it'd um, be pretty cool yeah I know you know there's been a lot of talk about standalone rep periods that might be a way around it in the future but at, at the moment we've, we're going with the Wednesday yeah, night model Sandline's never happening. <laughs> um, Origin part three. <laughs> Woof. Brad Fittler selections. Scandal. Uh, been plenty of noise about Fittler selections for game three. Um, best at centre. Gutho on the bench. Gutho at the bench, I'll probably find the weirdest. Um, Saifidi, no Hines, which I like. Yeah, I'm sure Protect you Protect him. <laughs> Protect him at all costs. Um, Brandy Alexander. Alexander's staunchly defended Fittler, mm. um, I probably, 
think he'd probably even agree. Maybe slightly overstepped the mark there. It was a little bit too cheesy. Yeah. Which was weird. Grow up. Um, but it, uh, some of the criticism being labelled as disrespectful, I, I don't entirely understand that. Mm. Unless we're going to go full Mark Levy and be like, go behind the blues. Go <laughs> behind the blues. Uh, what's, what, what do you think? Is, is the Fittler stuff, is it a little bit disrespectful? Is it a little bit too personal? No. They've, they've underperformed for you know the last two series now under his watch. And a yeah. lot of what that comes back to is the selections he's got selections wrong in my opinion and in a lot of people's opinions um and people are allowed to to be critical it's not a personal thing no one's attacking freddie he's yeah i mean he's a legend of the game he's probably new south wales best ever player if not he's in probably the top three um you know he's he's a great great fella popular guy in, in the media but you're allowed to be critical of things he's got wrong and yeah. he has got things wrong um even if him and brandy don't want to admit it um the performances show that and the selections for for game two have left a lot of people puzzled um the bradman best one i found odd um, yeah. and i know you know some people have, have probably taken it a little bit far in their criticism i don't think brent reed last week on 360 was one of them when brandy snapped yeah. at him um i thought that was a pretty fair line of questioning i i don't think he should be there over Someone like Isaac Tungo from Penrith, yeah. um, even Katoni Staggs, he had one opportunity in Origin, never looked at again. Even like Sifatalakai from Cronulla, um, there's there's plenty of guys out there. Obviously, Campbell Graham's injured, so that doesn't help. But there's there's plenty of guys out there I probably would have looked at before Bradman Best, and that's no disrespect to him. I just don't think he's quite ready for for Origin. Um, and yeah, the Gutho one, as you you mentioned, do you have any idea where he's going to play? Because I have no I, idea. Brad Fittler said yesterday he has no idea. So that's, I, I, that's I, a great sign. I did yeah. see that. Uh, is it a is it like a super late reaction to the turbo stuff? Or is like actually now we'll put in a little bit of coverage for centre and fullback? But like Gutho could play anywhere in the back line. Is is a ball playing backline player? But I just don't carrying someone on the bench in the event of an injury feels I don't know it feels like overkill yeah if you don't have an actual plan for him if no one gets injured because otherwise you're wasting a bench spot that you could give to someone like Spencer and you yeah. and have an extra forward on the bench and when you've got a hooker already on the bench as well in Reese Robson it yeah I don't know it's it's limiting what they could potentially do New South Wales um, and yeah if, if Freddie doesn't have a clear plan for Gutho I don't understand why why pick him because we saw in Origin 1 that didn't work out because he didn't have a clear plan for Nico Hines. Um, and he brought him on 12 minutes ago and played centre and missed a tackle on Cam Munster. And that was it. Never to be seen again. So, I don't know. If you don't have a plan for someone, don't pick them in, in State of Origin. That's as simple as that in my book. I'm interested to see how the hooker uh, rotation goes. Like, if they start. Mm. Well, you've got Reese Robson or Damien Cook that can play centre as well, apparently. So... <laughs> 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 I just I don't I don't understand it. I like the two hooker model in yeah. Origin. Um, we we see how well it's done for Queensland. Gotcha. Um, so I was on board with it when they they had Cook and Robson, and then Cook didn't play hooker at all. So I don't know. He he he, he, he makes me scratch my head sometimes, Freddie. I've got to be honest. It was interesting when uh, so on ebbs and flows last week we had Scott Drinkwater, we had Reese Robson, and they were saying about oh it's, you know it's amazing having someone like Freddie on the Tuesday. They went to the Chloe. Yeah, had some beers. Mm-hmm. Um, they were just, you know, trading around war stories and Freddie was saying about how he played Origin in like 91 or whatever and they're like, they weren't even born. <laughs> like even close to being born then. <laughs> they weren't even an idea in their yeah, minds. Yeah, 100%. Though, think, <laughs> just wild. Uh, so I think we both agree, Brad Fittler, criticism. Um, most of it, pretty fair. It comes yeah. with the role, unfortunately. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I'll be singing his praises if they win game three, definitely. I won't be because it's the rest <laughs> of the series. I... <laughs> nah, <laughs> doesn't send matter. Him, send him out a winner. Um, back in clubland, Topi Sexton uh, played very well. New Bulldogs man, part of the family club, hmm. come down from the Titans. It was only 18 months ago, Jamal Fogarty was moved on from the Titans because Sexton was the guy. Hmm. And now... He's played one game all year Yeah, yeah for the Titans. So, um, But what do we have here? Two line breaks, 120 plus run meters. That doesn't really tell the story. Of, I thought how effective it was. Burton probably had best game of the season. Yeah, I'd probably. Say. Yeah. Um, Dogs look good, as I said at the, at the at the top. I thought they were they played bl- bloody well for a team which got pumped, mm. you know, less than a few weeks ago. Um, I thought they were very very good. Uh, Buzz reporting the dogs are chasing Bud Sullivan for next year, which you must be loving. 
Don't know how much truth there is to that one. I've got to be perfectly honest. Flanners off contracts. Oh, up and moving to the forwards. Yeah. Is he still 18? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Gus came out last week and, and said that, that Carl is yeah. going to move to, to lock um, probably next year. I understand an 18-year-old, he's pretty much fresh out of playing schoolboy footy. Maybe didn't want to chuck him into starting in the middle yeah. um, against some of the packs we've got going around in the NRL and give him another off-season to develop his body. Um, as well as his football but yeah his future looks like it's at lock um, and Toby Sexton signed until the end of 24 so he's got time to to, to prove himself in yeah. the position do you did you like what you, you I saw re- you, I really and could I, be the man? I thought their spine or at least I, I liked how he was with Reed Marnie um, I thought him and, uh, and Burton were very good together I thought he played well off the forwards he kept them moving forward I thought mm. um, I liked him I don't know if he's a long-term option. And Gus was speaking about uh, someone, Mitchell? Mitchell Woods. Mitchell Woods, sorry. Um, who was potentially their like, long-term option. And they got a few options in the lower grades. But even if it's till the end of 2024, I really like Saxon. I thought he was good. Yeah, I thought he straightened them up a lot as well. He gave them just a clear direction um, and allowed Burden to, to play off the back of that. Because we know how good Burden is as a ball runner. And he's probably had to shoulder a lot yeah. of the, the weight this year from an organising perspective. Um, so... I think it's a I think it's a really really astute signing from Canterbury um, till the end of twenty four. This Mitchell Woods is the Howard Matts captain. Um, they won the grand final. Um, he played in the schoolboy carnival last weekend. He's done AFL player and stuff as well. So he's certainly one to look in the future. But he's only seventeen, so he's yeah. still got another couple of years until he's probably going to be ready for the top grade. So for now, Toby Sexton looks like he's the the man at number seven because I don't think this Bud Sullivan rumor report. As much yeah. as much weight to it, I, I wouldn't think. He signed until the end of 25 and, you know, all the Ben Hunt stuff going on as well. We don't know where that's going to end up. And I don't think it makes much sense now for the Bulldogs to go and sign Sullivan when they just signed Sexton last week. So if the report came out a week and a half, two weeks ago, it might have made a little bit of sense. But now, I don't know. I, I don't think Bud is, is keen to go anywhere. I think he's happy at the Dragons. So I think Toby's the man for the next 18 months. I'd love to have seen Sexton paired with maybe more of a veteran 5'8". Um, Burton's not that old himself mm. just because you think when he came feels like he came straight from schoolboys into the Titans and has always had to be probably the senior yeah. pivot yeah. Um, but we'll see how it goes he's get, been given his chance now that's all you can really ask for anyone mm. so is he the long term option I don't know maybe he's certainly an option I don't know if it's the option yeah I don't want to don't want to go out on a limb that much and, and say after one game that he's going to be their halfback for the next <laughs> 10 years. But I, I like what I saw. Um, I think he's a, a young player with a lot of a lot of upside. Um, you know, he's not flashy by any yeah. means, but when you've got someone like Burden outside him and you know Josh Adokar and then Stephen Crichton coming in next year, he could just be the, the organising seven that they need and unlock the guys around him. So I'm a big fan of the, the Sexton move in the short term and it could be long term as well. Speaking of unlocking, segues are getting better as we keep going. <laughs> Zach Lomax uh, came up as a winger, wanted to be a fullback, ended up a centre, but has how long did he play? Twenty five minutes, fifteen? Yeah, he played the last twenty minutes, I think, at, at as fullback. a fullback, and he was it was good. He was really good. Yeah, he um, impressive there actually. So he's on a fair bit of money, but he has been dropped to New South Wales Cup by Griffin uh, a few times, I believe. He's got what, three years on. On good good money, which fair play to him. That's great. Yeah. There has been reports that he wants out. Flano is saying no way, um, which they'd be mad to let him go. Mm. Uh, he's one of the gun players. From you as a Dragons fan, but also as objective as you can, do you like him at fullback? Uh, I do like him at fullback. Um, I thought he, he showed some good signs. He had limited opportunities there. I want to say in either 2020 or 2021. Yeah. Um, it's all he, he spent a little bit of time at fullback but didn't get much opportunity and they moved back to guys like Dufty um, instead. So he hasn't had yeah, a, an extended run there. Yeah. I don't know if he will get one. Um, he might play there over the next few weeks if Tyrell Sloan's still out that, injured. Yeah. But I, I think they're still banking on, on Sloan being their long-term, long-term guy there. Um, but Zach looks like he has a bit of renewed confidence, I suppose, in the, um, the last couple of weeks. And I guess if he does play fullback, just gets his hands on the ball a little bit more. Yeah. Um, sometimes when he's not getting the ball how he wants it or when he wants it, he tries to overplay his hand a little bit, which we've seen um, throughout the last couple of seasons. But he played quite well 
the other night. So it's it's certainly an option for them uh, moving forward, depending on Tyrell Sloan. What do you think? Do you think Sloan, Lomax, you fit them both in, or I, is, is Lomax a guy? I would put Lo- I'd keep Lomax in the centres. I think he shows enough there that mm. he can be like a bloody great centre. I just don't think he's that enthused. But also sometimes it's not maybe he gets the results which aren't of his making in that he doesn't get enough ball as you said mm. I don't think he becomes disinterested but he just gets he gets like the ball what maybe once a set tries mm. to do too much he tries too hard which is you know not the worst thing to accuse someone yeah. of, of doing but um, yeah I'm unsure I, I know Moses Sully's off contract I think at the mm. end of this year so you know, he's probably one they'll want to look to re-sign they've got some young guys coming through um, young Savelio Tamale has been named in the New South Wales 19s he's been playing a fair bit of cup in the centres this year. Um, so they could, you know, if, if they are hoping to push um, Tamale into first grade next year, they could look at, at Lomax as a fullback option because I know, you know, Sloan, for all of his brilliance, is still, you know, he's quite raw. He does have his issues in defence, yeah. which, you know, is just part and parcel of your Dragons fullback over the last <laughs> five or six years. So I don't know. He, he has a lot of upside, Sloan, but Lomax could be a safe short term option. I'm not entirely sure. Okay. But. Um, I don't hate it. I've got to be honest. I don't Interesting. hate it. Interesting. Mm. Never thought I'd say that. Yeah. To be honest either. But I, yeah, I like Lomax at fullback, and I think if he did get a bit more of an extended run there, he could develop into a, a pretty solid number one. Okay. Zach Lomax's future at fullback real? Ridiculous. Seems like you're saying real. Mm. I don't know if his fullbacks future of the fullback at as a, at the Dragons. I think you could play fullback elsewhere. Mm. I'm going to say ridiculous. Oh. I don't think they'll do it, but yeah. I I don't mind it if if they did. So I'm 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 sitting on the fence a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. I just I think they've invested a lot of time into to Tyrell and I think they will try and yeah, keep him in that mind. position and, and have them both in the team. Um but it's not a bad problem to have, I suppose, having two guys that could play the position long term. There's a bit of promise going on at the Dragons. Who would have thought? <laughs> Here we are. I'll start winning some games first. <laughs> no need for that. Uh, all right, that's it. We'll speak to you next week, uh, post-origin period. Mm. Let's see how that goes. Thank There'll God be for that. plenty to chat about.